Countdown for blast off. X minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand would-be worlds. The National Broadcasting Company presents X minus one. Tonight's story, The Man in the Moon. Attention, attention. This is the Federal Bureau of Missing Persons calling all local agencies. Attention, this is a coded report nationwide. Missing since 9 o'clock this morning, the following persons. Smigley, Jonathan, 5 feet 8 inches tall, brown hair, brown eyes, mastoid scar behind right ear, last seen wearing blue top coat and tan cap, wanted by Los Angeles... Hello, get off this wavelength. This is a restricted band. Hello, hello, Earth. Uh, Whoever you are, you're on a coded wavelength. Tune out. This frequency is reserved for the Federal Bureau of Missing Persons. Hello, Earth. This is the moon calling Earth. Hello, Earth. This guy is loony. This is Jake in transmission. Jake, this is Charlie in the code room. Some crackpot is on our frequency. Yeah, I heard him, Charlie. I've got CQ trying to trace a source now. We should have a triangulation any second. Well, hurry it up, will you? Some ham is in for a good stiff fine by the FCC. Yeah, they ought to take his license away. Oh, here comes Lenny with the directional fix. Right. Thanks, Lenny. Hey. Hey, what's this? This is impossible. What's going on down there? How about it? Get that ham out of my killer cycles. Oh, listen, Charlie, unless this is a gag, that interference is being beamed from 240,000 miles away. Oh, now, Jake, you know there ain't no such thing as 240,000 miles away. Yes, there is, Charlie, straight up. Oh, now, wait a minute. Charlie, that signal is coming from the moon. Are you nuts? Well, somebody might be bouncing it, like a radar signal. Radar? On this frequency? Where'd you study basic radio? Now, listen, Flathead, you asked for a fix. I gave the best fix our instruments can find. Take it or leave it. Somebody on the moon is calling the Bureau of Missing Persons. Mr. Timken! Mr. Timken! What's the sweat, Charlie? Shouldn't you be broadcasting? Listen, Mr. Timken... You know I'm a sober citizen, right? Mm-hmm. Never once have I broadcast with the smell of alcohol on my breath, right? Right. In all your 12 years here at the Bureau, did I well, once what's ever... What's the matter, Charlie? We're picking up a message on our wavelength. Well, did you report to the FCC? I ain't got the nerve. Well, what's wrong? You'll scream when you hear this, Mr. Timken. You'll jump right out the window, but... We are getting an SOS from the moon. <laughs> Well, that's it. He started on voice and switched to Morse. The way the signal repeats sounds like a phonograph record or automatic sender of some sort. Well, what's it say? Uh, let's see here. Can you read me? Help, Otterburn. We'll contact when moon is in phase. Let's have that again. Can you read me? Help, Otterburn. We'll contact when moon is in phase. Otterburn. That sounds like a name, huh? Otterburn. Otterburn. Wait a minute. Something registered? Cornelius Otterburn. Holy jumping Jehoshaphat. Hey, where are you going? Talk to the chief. Hey, wait a minute. What are you going to tell him? We just got a CQ from the man in the moon? That's exactly what I am going to tell him, Charlie. Oh, this just too much for me. (laughs) Washington Star Ledger. Uh, Let me have O'Brien on city desk. A moment. O'Brien? Seamus, yeah. Charlie Starbuck, down at the Missing Persons Bureau. You want a hot one? No kidding. This'll cost you a beer, okay? All right, shoot, noodle brain. I'll stay on your wavelength for 30 seconds. Okay. We just got a radio message from the moon. Yeah. What? From the moon. Call me back when you're sober. Okay, Seamus, if you don't know a story when you see one, I... I'll send you the name of a good psychiatrist. So long, Orson Welles. How do you like that? He don't believe me.
Otterburn, Mr. Wade. Now, does that name ring a bell? You're the man with the photographic memory, Henry. What about Otterburn? Cornelius Otterburn, atomic physicist, reported missing from his home in Baltimore on June 5th, 1945, just five years ago, vanished completely. Are you trying to tell me you really think there's something to this man-of-the-moon business? Henry, I'm surprised at you. This is some crackpot trying to jam the airwaves. Yes, but the name Otterburn is so unusual. So are a lot of names. But I have a theory that... I uh, was afraid uh, of that. Henry, you always have a theory. Let's see, what was it last year? Oh, yes. That people disappear in occupational cycles. But it's true. Please, I... Henry, I'm a busy man. You expect me to believe that this Otterburn is sitting up on the moon, sending out shortwave messages? Well, he might be on Earth bouncing the messages off the moon. And... But who's to say he isn't on the moon? Henry, as chief of this bureau, I have my hands full trying to coordinate reports from 48 states in Alaska. I have no time to include the moon. But, Mr. Wade... Out, Henry. But, Mr. Wade... Out, I'm busy. Yes, sir. Oh, here. Take this folder of reports for the dead file. Yes, sir. And no more nonsense, eh, Henry? Yes, sir. I appreciate that you have a very dull job filing old missing persons reports, and I appreciate that you take an active interest in the affairs of the Bureau. But no more nonsense, eh? No, sir. No more nonsense. Hmm. Uh, pardon me. Hmm? You are Mr. Henry Timken. <laughs> That's my name. Permit me, Jefferson Philo, scientific feature writer. Oh, how do you do? Oh, are you a newspaper man? Not exactly. I write as a hobby. Occasionally, the papers give me leads on an assignment. If I may have a moment of your time... Well, certainly. Just sit down at my desk over here. Thank you. <laughs> my, that's quite a stack of papers. <laughs> Filing. Uh, I'm the records custodian of the Bureau. Twelve years and never misplaced a record. Magnificent. I admire the precise mind, Mr... Uh... Timken. Of course. Now, Mr. Timken... Mr. O'Brien, the editor of the Star, I just said I might drop by and investigate a rumor. Only a rumor, mind you, that a message from the, uh, moon? Well, we aren't certain it's from the moon. It, it may be a bounce. They have bounced radar waves off the moon, you know. Yes, and, I know. I wrote the first newspaper article on it. Really? I'd be interested to read it. I must have a copy in my briefcase. Well, I, I don't bother. I... Oh, but I insist. Oh, yes. Yeah. There you are. I'll leave it on your desk. Oh, thank you very much. Now... About this message from the moon, Mr. Timken... Well, now, we don't know for sure, as I said. But I believe that this message, wherever it originates, is from Cornelius Otterburn. The physicist? Oh, do you know him? I once wrote an article on his contribution to nuclear mechanics. A brilliant man, Otterburn. Years ahead of his contemporaries. Mm. Well, whoever is sending those signals, if he isn't on the moon, is at least using the moon as a sounding board, bouncing the signal. But why, Mr. Timken? Why? Well, if you will come here tomorrow night at 8, Mr. Philo, we may learn the answer to that question. I've arranged with Charlie, our radio man, to let me use the equipment. May I consider this an invitation? You certainly may. Very well, sir. <coughs> Until tomorrow night, then. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Philo. Hmm. Uh, let's see now. Aiken, Abelard, Abramson, Rano, Atch... Well, that's funny. Now, where did this list of names come from? Paul Aaron's. Astromathematician, Robert Simons, electronic engineer, Carl Parker, mining specialist. Well, this must have got mixed up with the papers on my desk by accident. Peculiar list of names. Oh, good morning, Charlie. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. Timkin. See, we made the papers. Oh? And how? And as the chief steamed up about it, he really gave me what for. What did the paper say? Oh, mostly ha-ha. Here's a herald, listen. Man on the moon contacts missing persons bureau. Missing atomic scientists sitting on the moon, say bureau experts, etc., etc. What a panny. Well, no wonder Mr. Wade is hopping. Say, about tonight, Mr. Timken, I don't now, know... Now, you promised you'd give me a key to the radio room. Yeah, but I didn't expect well, it. I'll take full responsibility uh -oh. with Mr. That, Wade. Not the time for the morning broadcast. We got quite a list today. Well, uh, mind if I listen a while? We may hear Otterburn. Well, I ain't self-conscious. Just stick around. Yes. <clears throat> attention, attention. This is the Federal Missing Persons Bureau calling all local agencies. Nationwide. This is a coded broadcast. The following persons are missing. Aaron's Dr. Paul, what? five feet five, brown hair, brown eyes, scar on left side of chin, thick glasses. Aaron's. Occupation, astromathematician. Missing, missing since 6 o'clock this morning. Uh, being sought uh, by uh, Bel Air police. Uh, Charlie. Repeat. Dr. Paul uh, Charlie, Aaron. Charlie, shut it off a second. Hold it. A delay one minute. 
Listen, Mr. Timken, it's okay to stay, but you can't interrupt us. This is important. Did you say Dr. Ahrens was reported missing this morning? 6 a.m. We got the report from Bel Air less than an hour ago. That, are you certain, Charlie? Positive. What is this? Charlie, what's the next name on the list? Uh, let's see. Simons, Robert, what? engineer. What? Came in less than 20 minutes ago. 20? Hey, what's the matter with you? You look like you've seen a ghost. It's nothing, Charlie, except that last night, quite by accident, someone left a list of names on my desk... And that list included the names of those two men who were reported missing within the last hour. What? Oh, that don't sound right to me. Well, it isn't right, Charlie. It leaves a big question to be answered. Who would make up a list of missing persons before they were missing, not after? And you say this list of names was left on your desk accidentally? I believe so, Mr. Wade. Do you have any ideas, Henry? Well, it's hard to say. Mr. Philo left some papers from his briefcase. Mr. Philo? Well, uh, a science feature writer. I see. You were the leak on that story, then? Yes, sir, I'm afraid I was. I didn't think it would be treated as a laughing matter. Well, I... we'll deal with uh, that later. Yes, sir. What's this Philo like? Well, he's, he's a strange old duck. Bald, thick glasses, tall. He walks stooped over. Uh, seems to know a great deal about scientific data. But, of course, being a science writer, he... Is there wouldn't... any other possibility? I believe that this is all hooked up with the broadcast from Otterburn. That seems to be a very remote possibility. Well, <clears throat> the Missing Persons Bureau deals in remote possibilities, Mr. Wade. I do not require a statement of policy. Yes, sir. What's the theory? Well, for some time now, it has been my contention that in a country like ours, where even the cleverest criminal can be ferreted out and located eventually, there is no such thing as a missing person. I was afraid of that. Uh, for 12 years now, I have kept the central files where information from all over the country is channeled and recorded. I have made a private study. This is beginning to sound familiar, Henry. And I have discovered that each year, literally thousands of persons vanish, leaving no trace. They are never located. Where do they go? Nobody knows. And? And they disappear in interesting cycles. What sort of cycles? Occupations, for example. One year, we'll have a run on, well, say, coal miners... Next year, the proportion of engineers increases, and then scientists. And... What do you think happens, Henry? I don't know, Mr. Wade, but I'm beginning to suspect that somebody else has discovered the same phenomenon, even to the point, perhaps, of being able to predict who will turn up among the missing next. Philo? Well, I don't know, but I would like to find out. And you think Otterburn may be a part of this picture? Mr. Wade, I definitely do. Henry, do you honestly expect me to buy an idea like well, that? It is more than I, an idea. The, the two top men on this list are missing, and... Maybe and, so, uh, but the rest of them aren't. Parker, Watson, Gibbs. Why, I saw Parker in the restaurant where I had lunch today. Yes, but... And Mr. if you Wade, think I'm going to make myself a laughing stock by accepting such a crack brain theory... Well, I... Excuse me. Yes. Hello, Wade speaking. Yes. Yes. I see. Uh, what name? Uh, just a moment. Uh, Henry, let me see that list again. Uh, Here you are, sir. Go ahead. I see. I'll get back to you. I uh, guess I owe you an apology, Henry. Sir? Carl Parker was just reported missing. Parker? Third man on your list. Holy mackerel. Exactly. Henry, for a good many years now, I've ridiculed these theories of yours. I don't know. Perhaps I have underestimated you. Maybe this time you've really stumbled onto something. What do you intend to do, Mr. Wade? I don't know. I haven't thought it out yet. I I was planning to listen for another broadcast tonight in the hope that Otterburn might try to contact us again. Good idea. I believe I'll join you. I also invited Mr. Philo, the feature writer. Oh? I'll be glad to meet him. I'm beginning to get interested in you, Mr. Philo. Mr. Wade, you don't think... That he's mixed up in this? Yes, sir. I don't know, Henry. But it suddenly strikes me that we don't know very much about him, really. We ought to contact the police. No, Henry. Uh, I think we're better off keeping this between ourselves for the moment. We're dealing with the unknown. And in solving an equation for the X factor, it's often easier to limit the number of terms. You follow me? I don't know, Mr. Wade. There may be more danger in what you have discovered than you are aware of. Let's keep it quiet. Do you agree? Maybe you're right, Mr. Wade. I I hadn't thought of the danger involved. Uh, 
Looking at a clock. My friend Mr. Filer was late. Well, he said he'd be here. He strikes me as a man who keeps appointments. Look out the window. Yes, sir. The moon is almost in direct phase. We can't wait much longer. Well, it's a perfectly clear night for transmission. If anybody's sending, we ought to pick it up with this equipment. You'd better switch on the set. Yes, sir. I never realized how eerie this office could be when it was empty. I left a light in the hall for Mr. Filer when he comes. Are you getting anything? Uh, just some foreign stuff, I think. Programming from Johannesburg, South Africa. We continue in April. That's a peculiar transmission sound. Earth. Earth. Now that sounds like something. See if I can work the selector. The moon is in phase. Yes. Hello. Earth. Can you hear me? Uh, I'll try to return. Hello? Hello? Hello. Earth. Uh, hello, do you hear me? Oh, I get you now. Thank God. Uh, who are you? Can you hear me? Uh, who are you? This is Professor Cornelius Otterburn. Hello? Uh, go on, I hear you. Not much time. They're on to me. They've located my sending point. Do you hear me? Uh, go ahead. Keep talking. I've only enough oxygen for a few minutes more. Well, where are you? I'm on the Earth side of the moon. Do you get that? The Earth side of the moon. A volcanic crater. Good uh, Start that recorder, Mr. Wade. Uh, go on, explain, please. Explain, please. Now listen closely. There is an Earth, Earth colony on the moon. There is an Earth colony on the far side of the moon, made up of renegade scientists and criminals. P Professor Ernst Halsman. Ernst Halsman. He, he died in an insane asylum in 1938. Professor Ernst Halsman discovered nuclear rocket power in 1935. Turned his plans over to escaped inmates of the asylum. They, they took off and set up a colony on the far side of the moon in 1938. Uh, go, go ahead, we're recording you. Each year, they recruit new colonists, colonists from Earth. S slave labor, mostly. Uh, I was kidnapped in 1945. Yes, I, I, I know. Uh, keep talking. They wanted me to work on atomic drive for their flying disc. Uh, Still getting you. Go on. Last month, Six others and I escaped. Uh, speak louder. You, you've got to stop them. Stop them. Stop who? The moon colony. Planning to take over the Earth invasion. Oh. Hang on. No, 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 no oxygen. Hard to, to, to breathe. Can you? Listen. They, they have agents on Earth. You hear me? Agents on Earth? Well, where? Who? Uh, hello? 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 Agents in... Henry, look out. Lights. Someone at the window, get down. Henry, are you all right? I, yes, I, I, I think so. This shot smashed the transmitter. And the lights. Strike a match. Careful. It was close. I got a look at him. From the description, it was your Mr. Philo. We got a recording anyway, but, but not the most important part of the message. Poor Otterburn. Suffocating to death. Henry, we've got to get you out of here. He said they have agents. Philo was probably one of them. He'll be looking for you now, trying to kill you. The, the police... Do you think the police would believe a fantastic story like this? People being kidnapped to the moon as slave labor? Moon colony planning an invasion of the Earth? But Henry, believe me, they'd, they'd trap us into straitjackets before we could finish. We've got to do something. We need time. Time to get through. You don't think my theory was bunk then? I know it wasn't, Henry. Right now, my only concern is for your safety. But we can't walk out of here. Philo's probably waiting. Listen... There's a service elevator that leads to the basement garage. Yeah? We can get down there. There are some delivery trucks parked there all night. We can probably get one started. The garage door's off the ramp, work from the inside. We'll start the mechanism and make a run for it. I, I don't know. I think if we call the police... By the time the police get here, we'll be dead. You think Philo will wait outside all night? Come on. That's an order. Okay. But what about the recording of Otterburn's notes? We'll leave that here in, in the safe in my office. They'll never get into that. Let's go. You buzz the elevator while I hide the recording. This is the basement. Come on. Keep to the side. Yes, sir. Shh. Let's try that delivery truck over there. I'll get in. All right, Henry. You start the mechanism to open the garage door, then jump onto the truck. Yes, sir. We'll make a dash for it. Where can we go? I have a farm outside Chevy Chase. It's private. 
Miles from the nearest neighbor and completely hidden by trees. We'll run for that. Go ahead, start the door up. All right. Quick, jump in. Let it go, Henry. Cross your fingers. We made it out all right. Anything doing? There's a blue coop behind us, Mr. Wade. It's easily following. I'll cut up Pennsylvania Avenue. Now Route 1, toward Baltimore. It is following. He turned with us. Can you go faster? Not much faster. Oh, he's gaining on us. I've got an idea. Hang on, Henry. Yes. Why'd you stop? I'll turn off the lights. <sighs> it worked. He shot right past us. Now we'll double back and go out another route. I don't see anything. I think we've lost him. Good. I think everything's going to be all right now. We can be at my farm in less than an hour. Not much longer now. Is anyone behind us? I, I thought I saw the blue coop again, but I, I was mistaken. Whew. This place is really hot in the wilderness. We can stay here indefinitely till we'll figure out the next move. Now, just up this dirt road now. There's the house up ahead. You're not going toward it. No, I have a better idea. There's a big abandoned wheat silo on my grounds. It's down a hollow where it can't be seen except in the air. And even then, the oak trees shield it. We'll hide you out there. Now, we leave the truck here. You'll never be seen. Come on. Yes, sir. How did you ever find this place, Mr. Wade? I've always liked seclusion. I bought it about 12 years ago. Come up here in the summertime to get away from it all. There's the silo. Uh, it's certainly well hidden. There's a small door around the side. Come on. Be careful of those bushes. Uh, uh, yes. It's hard to see them in the dark. Do you suppose Philo will find us? I assure you, Henry, Mr. Philo will never find us here. Not in a million years. Here's the door. It's pitch dark. Oh, my arm. I know the way. Just a few steps up and another door. Steel. This is an unusual silo. Double wall, wood outside, and steel inside. Completely fireproof. An army couldn't wreck it. We're inside the inner shell. Careful. We're in a circular room. Stay here a moment. I'll go outside and see if the coast is clear. In a moment, your eyes will become accustomed to the darkness. I'll bring back some food and water. Uh, don't be long, Mr. Wade. I... This, this place gives me the willies. Just a moment. Mr. Wade. I swear I hear something. Mr. Wade. What's that? There is something. Good Lord. There's someone in here. It's locked. Oh, no. Mr. Wade! Mr. Wade, let me out! I'm not alone in here! Mr. Wade! Th this must be a light switch. Thank God. Huh? Oh, no. People. 10, 15, 20. Mr. Wade, help! Help! It'll do you no good to shout, Henry. Mr. Wade, where are you? Outside. Speaking over the intercom. Mr. Wade, there are people in here. 15 or 20 of them, they're... They're sitting like statues, just, just staring at me. They won't hurt you, Henry. Huh? They've all been drugged. They're even more helpless than you. But, but, who are they? Permit me to introduce them, Henry, since they're currently unable to introduce themselves. The gentleman seated before you, the one with the scar, is Dr. Paul Ahrens, the astro-mathematician. Next to him is Mr. Robert Simons, electronic engineer. Names on the list. Yes, you're familiar with the rest. They've all been, uh, shall we say, recruited for work with Professor Halsman's group on the moon. 
own. Then you, you, you're one of them. Of course. Oh, yes. There's one whose name was not on our list. If you'll turn around, Henry, you'll recognize the drugged form of your old friend, Mr. Philo. Uh, Philo? But I, I thought... That he was part of the conspiracy? No, on the contrary. His snooping made it necessary for us to include him. He's put the man in the window, the one who fired the shot. An agent of mine, the pilot of this ship. Ship? What ship? This silo is camouflaged for a rocket launching platform. In a moment, the roof will slide back for the rocket's takeoff. A rocket ship? In exactly 70 hours, you and your companions will join Professor Otterburn on the moon. But you... You, you can't do this to me! We have done it, No! You see, there was another name omitted in that list, which I carelessly mixed up with your papers. That of no. Henry Timken. No! Bon voyage! I won't let you do this! You can't! Please! Please let me out! Let me out, please! It's can't happen! Let me out! last night the following persons Timken Henry age 45 height 5 feet 8 165 pounds brown eyes slightly balding occupation records custodian repeat Timken Henry age 45 height 5 feet 8 165 pounds In just a moment, a word about next week's adventure. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you The Man in the Moon, an original radio drama written by George Lefferts. Featured in the cast were Louis Van Ruten as Henry, Santos Ortega as the Chief, Ross Martin as Charlie, Sidney Smith as Otterburn, Bob Haig as Jake, Joe DeSantis as Philo, and Ed Latimer as O'Brien. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Fred Way and is an NBC Radio Network production. And now, next week, the sign on the window said Perigi's Wonderful Dolls. A woman and a child waited outside. The little girl peering eagerly through the window and the woman glancing impatiently at her wristwatch, as if expecting someone who was late for an appointment. And there was nothing about Perigi's doll shop to warn them that they were waiting to keep an appointment.